Okay, in this video, we're going to observe this recursive formula, which says a1 is equal to 1 and an is equal to 1 plus 1 over 1 plus its previous term, when n is greater than or equal to 2. So, let's go ahead and just write down our first few terms to see the behavior of this, and hopefully we can see a pattern of that. So here we go. Let's say a1 is right here, it's given to be 1, so that's what we have. Now, to get a2, we will have to utilize this formula, which is says 1 plus 1 over... 1 plus the previous term. So we have to look here, which is this 1. And now we can just add this up. This is 1 half plus 1, which is going to be 3 half, right here. And of course, keep on going. This right here, a3, is going to be 1 plus 1 over 1 plus the previous term, which is 3 half. Just put it down here. And we are dealing with some complex fractions, but it's not so bad. To do this, of course, this is going to be 5 half. Do the reciprocal is 2 over 5 plus 1 is going to be 7 over 5, like this, right? And let's do one more. a4 is equal to 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 7 over 5 right here. And let's see if we can do this in our head or not. Okay, plus 1 is going to be 12 over 5. Do the reciprocal is going to be 5 over 12. And then we add 1 to that. It's going to be 17 over 12 like this, right? So that's the idea. First thing first, as you can see, all these numbers right here are just going to be fractions. And more specifically, they are rational numbers because we have a whole number over a whole number. These numbers are all rational. And let's see. Um, I don't want to deal with fractions anymore. And also I want to see how big the numbers are in an easier way. So I will just tell you guys the decimal versions right here. Once one, of course, this right here is equal to 1.5, this right here is equal to 1.4, and this right here is approximately equal to 1.41, and let me just use a couple more digits, let's say 6, 6, and I'm just going to cut it off, I'm not going to run, okay? So it's just 6, 6, and one more, right? And then just da, 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 because it keeps on going forever. All right, so, so now you see, we go from 1, and you go up, huh? It goes up, and then it went down, and then it goes up. Kind of weird, huh? Let's do one more. Let's see what happens. If we have a5, of course, this is going to be that. And I'll just put this down right here for you guys. I'll just put this down as 1 plus 1 over 1 plus, which is a 17 over 12. But this time, I'll just tell you guys the decimal for this. It's going to be what? This is going to be 1.41379. And then da, da, da. So let me just check. Yes, I have the answers on the screen because I can memorize all these digits. Okay, so you see, one and then goes up and then went down and then well, goes down and then goes up and then goes down. Ah, interesting. And I'll just tell you guys the rest of the answers. That's a six, a seven, and a eight. So you pretty much do the following. So a six, you can guess it. We went down earlier, so it's going to go up, and that's in fact the pattern and it's going to be 1.414 huh interesting 1.414285 and so on so on so on again i'm not wrong there i'm just writing down the first five digits after the decimal point right here so it's one point and then five digits and then next we have 1.41420 and here a a is 1.414 Ah, as you can see, it looks like this number is actually converging to about 1.414 because you see that I don't think the next one is going to be that big of a difference, isn't it? So, very nice. And here is the deal. This is the list of the first eight terms. And we're going to find out like what this is going to converge to. Keep in mind though, everything here they were fractions, again, rational numbers. But this number doesn't look rational at all. So here is the deal. In fact, to show that this actually converges, you have to do more like a technical word, such as you have to prove that this is increasing, decreasing, etc., or bounding above whatsoever. But like, you know, I'm not going to worry about that too much because this is just an introductory question. I will tell you guys that given, which I actually gave you guys this scenario, given an does converge. So you know, in the end, you actually end up with a finite result, right? Now, we're going to find out what the limit of an is. This is how. 
given this right here does converge. So I would just say let L equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of an because of course an does converge. And now here is perhaps a slightly tricky part. If an converges to L, well, what if we take the limit as n goes to infinity of an minus 1? If you look at this, this is not just off by 1, but the idea is that, well, if an goes to L, an minus 1 will go to L as well. That's the idea. And the reason I bring this up is because we actually have to look back to our recursive formula. And from there, I will just write this down again. An equals 1 plus 1 over 1 plus an minus 1. Well, we can just take the limit as n goes to infinity. And the idea is that this right here will go to L because right here we said so. And then of course the rest we get this is equal to, and we have 1 over, well actually 1 plus 1 over, there are so many ones. And then 1 plus this thing, a n minus 1, which I wrote it down, and L like this. This kind of technique will work if we end up with a finite answer right here, and then if it doesn't end up with any kind of like weird situations. So of course let's just figure this out. And to work this out, of course, we can just multiply everybody by the lowest common denominator, just to the usual way. So 1 plus L. And we see that. Let me just put it down right here. We get this times that, which is going to be L times 1 plus L squared. And that's equal to this times 1, which is 1 plus L. And we add this times that. They cancel. So we add 1 to it. So. Again, I'm just multiplying things out. And now you see, we have the L on both sides, so we can minus L on both sides, and that cancels out very nicely, right? And we end up with L squared is equal to 1 plus 1, which is 2. And of course, we can take the square roots on both sides. Usually, you put on plus minus, but if you look at all these numbers right here, everybody's positive. There's no way to be negative. So in fact, the negative doesn't matter. So in the end, we are saying, this and that cancel, of course. L, which is the limit as n goes to infinity of a n. This right here, it's equal to square root of 2. Ha! Huh, very, very nice, isn't it? So perhaps this is like a different way um, to take limit. And this right here, again, sometimes it works, especially if you end up with an equation that you're able to solve for L. Sometimes this right here might not work just because how the um, recursive formula is and all that. But hopefully it gets all like this. It's very different compared to the usual way to take them, right? Anyway, as always, that's it.